Well, thanks a lot for your friendly introduction. Um, it is my great honor to be here, part of the program of ICA, and I'm very proud to be here and to talk to you about actual data science in context of data protection regulation. Uh, okay, if you know it, I'm not a man. And I'm chair of the new section of actuarial data science at the DAV, so we can skip to our agenda. Over the next half an hour, I want to talk about data protection in the European Union in context of actuarial data science applications. Well, let's start. Um, <coughs> Let me give you a short introduction, a short motivation of the, of the topics we are talking about. We are living in times of fast technological progress, and we are currently experiencing often the renaissance of artificial intelligence, I think. And the central drivers are the big players like Google, Facebook, Apple, and so on. And nowadays, it is no problem to train neural networks within 200 or 300 hidden layers. It's because we have cloud computing and, and very special software. And with AlphaGo here, you know AlphaGo, uh, we have an amazing example of the power of machine learning. And uh, AlphaGo is, is past. AlphaGo Zero is the new topic. AlphaGo Zero hits. AlphaGo in 100 games of Go 100 times. So it, we are living in a renaissance of artificial intelligence. And in this context, the insurance industry is very well affected of this because we are using data mining algorithms, artificial intelligence, machine learning uh, techniques for analyzing the data of our customers and we do something about uh, predictive marketing, for example, or elastic pricing. And we have uh, several things to do here in this context using uh, the things of machine learning. And in addition, we see a trend of new products in the market, for example, and more individual individualization, respect to time and respect to the behavior of the customers. For example, pay-as-you-drive telematic products or pay-as-you-live products. <coughs> and in this context, we are affected of data protection indeed. So this for motivation. We are actuaries, and so we have lot of fun to do these things, but we are also in context of data protection. What is data protection? Data protection is the protection against abusing data processing and the protection to the right of informational self-determination. And in context of digitalization and artificial intelligence, this data protection is gaining more importance. But not everywhere in the world, but we want to focus now to European Union. So in European Union, we are in a special situation because until last month we have two directives for data protection. The directive 95, it defines a minimum standard. 95 means it's from the year to uh, 1995. It defines a minimum standard for data protection and there is general prohibits the processing of sensitive personal data except two reasons. Oh, sorry except to if you have an explicit approval of the concerned person, an explicit approval, or you have important reasons. Whatever it means, important reasons, we will see later. So this directive has to be transposed into national law. And we have a second directive for electronic communications, which is an appendix of the year 2002. And so, because of the reason it has to be transposed into national law, we have the situation in the past that leads to different regulation schemes in every single state of the European Union. And so we have an homology of implementation and the chance of privacy arbitrage, for example. 
Last month, two weeks ago, we have a new situation. We have a so-called general data protection regulation in the European Union. Union. It's valid for two weeks. And it is a very interesting thing, I, I think. The general data protection regulation should replace the old directives first. And it's setting out a general European Union-wide uh, framework, and there's no need to transpose international law. So it's since the 25th of May of last month, it's a regulation in the whole European Union without no more transpose international law. And so this will lead to a standard data protection across over all countries in the European Union, and so we have no more data protection islands in the European Union. And yeah, let's have a look, a short look at the regulation. I have only half an hour, so I can only uh, give you the, the very important topics. First of all, the territorial scope. The general data protection regulation is valid if you are processing in the European Union, clear. If you have anything you have to do in the European Union, you are lying under the law of general data protection regulation. But also, if people are living here in the European Union are affected of your activities, the regulation is also valid. For example, if you are Facebook at USA and you have clients in Germany, more than 20 million, I think, so you are affected of general data protection regulation because the concerned persons are living here in the European Union. With the general data protection regulation, we have several principles you have to take into account if you have anything to do with data mining or, or processing of personal data. For example, you have to use the lawfulness, the fairness, the purpose limitation, transparency, accuracy, store limit, storage limitation, and so you have to do and take into account several principles if you are working with personal data. So, in Article 6 is, 6 is defined, the lawfulness of processing, and the processing of personal data is only allowed only if and only if you have the consent of the data subject, the concerned person which data you want to use. And you remember in our uh, few slides ago, we have uh, important reasons, and here we have the important reasons. One important reason is you have a contract with the data subject, and you have to, uh, you need the data for perform and for uh, the contract, or you have a legal obligation, or you have to protect vital interests of the data subject, and so on. There are several um, things uh, which are allowed you to uh, use personal data of the data subject. And there will be more rights to be established for the data subject. That's new. We have several rights for every person. Uh, for example, the right to rest restriction of processing. Restriction of processing means that you, you as an insurance company, can only use, may only use the data you are really needed for the contract, for the transpose of the contract, so not mo no more. And we have, for example, uh, the right to be forgotten. So the data subject has the right that you have to delete the data you are not needed for processing, and, and so on. And I have read it here for your way home on this afternoon. You can see at the details. And there's something more new, the infringements. And uh, old data regulation, old means about uh, two, year, two weeks ago, there was no infringements. You, have, you, you, you can do what you want. You have uh, no problem with, with regulation. Um, you have principles, clear. But now we have here uh, several infringements if you are violated the rights of the data subjects, several penalties are foreseen. 
and 20 million euro, that's, that's uh, a high sum, for one, for only one uh, violation of data protection. And in addition, you have to compensate for material and immaterial damage, and you have a problem, maybe a problem loss of reputation. So this is new, and we have here also um, several penalties foreseen. So let's have a look at the impact of insurance industry business cases in context of actual data science. And yeah, I am a lecturer of a German actuarial academy for computer science and actual data science. And in our seminars, we take a brainstorming, we make a brainstorming of business cases which are depending on data science, machine learning, artificial intelligence. And this is only one example for several business cases for actuaries in context of data science. And there are no more, more, but it's a selection, but it's one example of a brainstorming what you can do today or in the future with the data of the data subjects. And I have chosen for you two business cases for analyze the impact of data protection in context of these business cases. So let's have a look at a concrete case example. Case example number one, predictive marketing. What is predictive marketing? Predictive marketing is you have a look at the data in your on your system and you want to find correlations to other clients and you want a targeted sales approach for your client. We all know it from Amazon. In Amazon you can you will, give, you will get the information uh, other clients they have bought this thing that you have bought, uh, bought uh, by this uh, article for example. So and for analyze the impact of data protection we have here, as an example, four levels of information about our customers. At the first level, we use only the customer information of the existing contracts. At the second level, we use additionally external public information about our customers. At the third level, we use, in addition, social media data. And at the fourth level, we use, in addition, behavior of the customer on the internet. It's a little bit future music, but it's, it's possible, technical possible. And then you use your machine learning tool for analyzing the information of your customers. Uh, for example, unsupervised uh, machine learning for clustering or artificial neural networks. So you can get information about the correlations between the behavior of your customers. And I have an example here, a fictive example. We have Mr. X. Mr. X is 50 years old, is a client for 10 years of your insurance company. He has a risk insured, an insured sum of 50,000 in case of death. And uh, at level one, we only want to use the customer information we are already have in our systems. So we give this in our machine learning tool. And it will give us the correlation that 67% of 15-year-old clients with Swiss insurance have an additional disability insurance. That's the, the solution or the, the information of our machine learning tool give us. And now we want to give a special offer to Mr. X for these concrete additional disability insurance. Is it lawfully or not? We will see. At level two, we use, in addition, public information about Mr. X. Mr. X is an actuary. He is about 15 years, and he is earning probably more than 100,000 euro per year. That's a very high sum. We don't know this from Mr. X. We know it from the DAV income survey. We have a look in the income survey. An actuary, 15 years old, 15 years actuary. About 100. This is not true. I know Mr. X. This is not true. It's more or less what he earns. But in the income survey, we have the information that this is uh, his income. And 
our machine learning tool gives us the information that 88% of comparable clients have a very much higher sum of insured. Uh, 50,000 euro, it's, it's, it's not much, but uh, higher than 250,000. And the question is, is it lawfully to give Mr. X a special offer based on the information of the DAV income survey? We will see. At the third level, we use, in addition, social media data from Mr. X. Mr. X is father of two little children, and he likes parachute jumping. Uh, I know it from his Facebook account, or his LinkedIn account, or what else. Um, public information, public social media data. And 57% of comparable clients have an additional compensation insurance. Compensation insurance may be nice here in this fact, but the question is, is it lawfully to give a special offer, especially for Mr. X, based on the information of his Facebook account in context of general data protection? And at the fourth level, we have a view on the internet behavior of Mr. X. And Mr. X is his favorite page, page is Porsche, Porsche a great uh, sports car manufacturer in Germany, I think you know it, and he's dreaming about a 911, 911 a very nice sports car, costs about 100,000 euros, uh, so he's dreaming about, I know it, and 77% of comparable clients there are dreaming about 911 have in addition a dread disease. I don't know why, our, but, but our machine learning tool has given us these information. And I want to give a special offer. Uh, together with your 911, you get a dread disease insurance, maybe. The question is, is that lawfully? Let's have a look at level one. Level one, using the information you already have from your customer, it's only with explicit approval. If you have a signature of your customer where he is, he gives you an explicit approval that you are, may use the information you still have of the customer for giving him special offers. If you have a signature, explicit approval, you can do this. You can give him, uh, based on level one information, a special offer for his insurance portfolio. What about level two, three, and four? No, sorry, you may not do this. You have no expectation due to Article 6. You remember Article 6, important reasons. These are not important reasons here. And you have a purpose limitation. You have data minimization. You have used fairly untransparent information about your clients. It's all not valid here, especially these things. You don't know earning money of Mr. X, you have only an idea because of the DIA income survey. And in the income survey, we have uh, expectation values, not the value of Mr. X. So, you may not do these things. You can only use the information you already have in your systems for giving special offer for Mr. X. So, predictive marketing, at Amazon, a very amazing story for insurance industry, we have a restriction of general data protection regulation. And you remember the infringements, 20 million euros or 4% of earning last year for every uh, special case of violence, the regulation. So this was the first example. Business case predictive marketing. So predictive marketing for insurers mm, may be complicated. Uh, there's one uh, thing in Article 9 of General Data Protection, and that is also new. If the personal data are manifestly made public by the subject, by the data subject, manifestly made public, then you can use it. Uh, that's a question. Is Facebook or LinkedIn account manifestly made public? Hmm. Maybe, maybe not. So we have the yellow traffic here. Uh, maybe it is also allowed to use Facebook data. So let's have a look at the second case example, pay as you live. Uh, we all know pay as you drive, telematic products, pay as you live in Germany or in European Union. 
um, yeah, maybe a little bit. In our case example, we have also three levels here. Uh, at the first level, we use a fitness variable. We use a fitness variable um, f which are collecting and transmitting fitness data of the data subject of our client. Uh, there are several things on the market, Fitbit, Nike Plus, Runtastic, and so on, or your uh, Apple uh, watch maybe counts your steps you have uh, done this morning. At the second level, we use, in addition, a medical variable which are collecting and transmitting medical data. For example, the pulse, the blood pressure, calories burned, and so on. There are several products at the market, a life core, IBG star, for example, and you can get, you can uh, transmit the information into the cloud. At the third level, we use also, in addition, behavior data of the insured person, for example, Facebook likes, buying behavior, and so on. So these are three levels of uh, collecting data. And then, on, based on this data, we give price charges and reductions are calculated for a special uh, standard product. So, for example, we have a pay as you live product, risk insurance, benefit only in case of death. Uh, at level one, we use fitness data with a fitness variable and we give a special offer, for example, 10% rebate um, if the targets are reached for X days last year. So for example, uh, 100 days more than 1,000 steps a day. For example, then we give 10% rebate. And at level two, addition, medical data, uh, based on a medical variable, we give, a, in addition, a special offer 20% rebate if exceeds limits are only 10 times a year, a blood sugar level or so. so. Is it OK to use this information for a special product? Yes, it is. Because of Article 6.1b, the processing is necessary for the performance of the contract between the insurance company and the data subject. At the moment, uh, the customer is, is agreed with this product and he will use his fitness and his medical variable. Then it is allowed to do these products with the rebate uh, and chases. Um, A third example, um, we have a client with diabetes, for example. Normally not insurable. You will remember benefit only in case of death. So it's uh, a client with, with diabetes is normally not insurable. But using a special medical variable, which are regular measures the blood sugar level, uh, we can give him a special offer. For example, we limited the insurance for one year and we measure the blood sugar level every day over one year. And if the blood sugar level is, is only higher 10 times over a, a benchmark, then we can renew um, for a, a, another year. And so we can uh, give an insurance um, a benefit in case of death for a person with diabetes. Is it OK to do this? Uh, yes, maybe. The problem here is we have very sensible um, personal data because we have here a medical impact. And we have the situation that there is a risk that the data of the data subject could be hacked and could be go to uh, everyone. So. We have, in this case, a special thing to do due to Article 35 of General Data Protection Regulation. We have to do an impact assessment, a data protection impact assessment, because the data we want to use for our product are very sensitive. Uh, and here, there are several things to do. You have to analyze the effects in case of uh, abuse the data in, in case of uh, hacking the cloud. And so you have to uh, inform the client. You have uh, several things to do in the data protection impact assessment. 
So, and if you have done the data protection impact assessment, it is possible to do uh, this product and to use the data of the data subject. So I come to the end. Final conclusion, only 30 minutes, so I can only sketch a few things and only analyze two very high-level business cases. But I hope you have seen we have a conflict, we have several conflicts in context of using artificial intelligence, using big data, big data versus data reduction and data economy. In the regulation, one of the principles is data reduction and data economy. It's versus big data. We have so much data, but we have a purpose that we use data reduction. Uh, insurance analytics, there are several things we can know. Uh, we can analyze about our customers, but there, is, there are several prohibition principles, prohibition principles. And we have innovative pro uh, products, and we have to prove if the right of informational self-determination is affected here. We are all actuaries, we are not layers, and the details are for the layers, but I think we as actuaries may have a um, sensitive sensitivity for using our data in our amazing machine learning tools. So I hope you can I have give you a very short overview of a data protection regulation in context of actuarial data science. And I come to the end. Uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you very much.